Hey, hey, it's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gerben from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 195. Expand something like 2016-2020 to five rows. All right, Mike, hey, today's question, and I actually have several different ways that I can solve this. This is from Erno V on YouTube. He has a column of uh, data that has a range of years, like 2000 to 2004, although some of them are just a single year. And he wants to be able to convert that to multiple years. For example, if it was 2000 to 2004, you'd get 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. And the data set that I'm using here is uh, name in column A and then the years in column B. And I want to expand that. So like here, uh, we want to have three years for Andy. Andy, 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 2013, 2014, 2015. And although there's many fun ways to do this, I can think of let and power query. My knee-jerk reaction every single time is just straight to VBA. In VBA, we separate this out. We loop from this to that. If there is nothing, uh, then we just grab Barb 2015 and copy it over. So Alt F11, uh, here's the code. Select the VBA worksheet, figure out the last row of data we have today. The next row is where I'm going to write the answers to. So I start in row two because I have headings in row one. And then loop for I equals two to final row. So we're looping through each individual row. Grab the name from column one grab the range from column two. If the range is a length of four, then it's just simple. Write the uh, data to column D and column E. D is the fourth column, E is the fifth column, this name, and zero plus this range to convert it to a number, and then increment the next row. But in the case where it's not a four character year, that means we're gonna grab the first year, the left of this range comma four, the last year, the mid, of this range comma six for a length of four, add zero to both of those to convert them from text, and then a second loop for J equals first year to last year, and then write that out to column D, the name, to column E, the year, and then increment next row. All right, so it's amazing how fast this is to run. We have this data here. I click expand by year, and bam, there we are. I know there's some folks out on my YouTube channel who hate when I use VBA, but you know, for me, it's just the fastest, easiest way to go. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Don't like VBA, a simple click and bam, that is lightning fast. All right, so for me, when I see this, I immediately think of Power Query, and here's why. Inside of Power Query, I can take that start year and end year and create a list that actually lives in the cell. And then I simply expand and I get the name repeated for every one of the years. Well, in the Excel spreadsheet, we're not allowed to have objects like lists or tables, but in Power Query, it's no problem. So I first need to convert this to an Excel table, so I use Control T and enter. I immediately go up to table design and give it a smart name. Something like names, year, start, and enter. Now I come up to data, get and transform, and there it is, from table or range. That opens up the Power Query Editor. I'm going to rename this and enter. I don't need change type, but now I want to create an extra column and from the start and end create a list. So I come up to add column custom column. We'll call the new column year. And here's what's so beautiful about Power Query. Right in that cell right there, I can create a list. Now we can use list syntax, open curly bracket. And if I had some number like 2013, if I wanted to increment, I use the dot dot operator that says, hey, I'm starting at some number. And I want you to increment all the way to the end number close curly bracket. Now this is hard coding this list in so every single cell will get the same years, but when we click OK, we can see sure enough we are allowed 
to have a list in a cell, which is very different than the Excel worksheet. If that was the same year for all of these, then we'd simply click Expand. But now we need to make this dynamic. So up in the formula bar, I'm going to double click that number. And we want to use the Excel worksheet function left. But that doesn't exist in Power Query. So we use text.start, open parentheses. The text is actually going to be the field name here. And we access that field name by using the square brackets, years, and then the second argument, comma. Well, the years are always four. Now, the problem with that is it's text. So we simply wrap on the outside number.from. Remember, Power Query is data type specific. So we have to create a number from text. So for each row in this table now, that will get the begin year as the first part of our list. Now I'm going to copy that. And for the end number, Control V. And now I simply, instead of start, use end. And that will work when I hit Enter. Now I have my dynamic list, including for the single year 2015 to 2015 is a list of one year. Now I can use Expand, Expand to New Rows. There's Andy and all of the years. I'm going to hold Control, click Name, right click, remove other columns. We'll add a data type. I'm going to say whole number. Sometimes you want it as text, but I'm going to say whole number and text. There's our steps, including that formula. Now I can come to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. I'm going to say the existing sheet right there. Click OK. Man, that is so cool to be able to have a list in a cell. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Wow, Mike, that is so cool. I love the way that you explain that Power Query lets us have a list right in the cell. And it's almost like an array constant there that you uh, created, although the dot dot is different than Excel. And then how you were able to create a formula for the start year and end year. Uh, so we have VBA, we have Power Query. And I know that some of our viewers who, who watch this will point out that there's a let formula that we could use. Uh, so what I have here is equal let, the start year is equal to the left of B2 comma 4. That creates text, so I add 0 to it. End year is the right of B2 comma 4. Uh, again, add 0. And then year count is end year minus start year plus 1. And then a sequence of one row, year count columns starting at the start year. And what that'll do, that'll generate three numbers, 2014, 2014, 2015. Concatenate the A2 with that. And we get Andy 2013, 2014, 2015. If this would change, let's say to 2019, you see that it automatically expands out like that. All right, so now I get this weird array here that's uh, not formatted correctly, but then using the uh, index function, setting it into unique and sort, that gives me a single column with all of these values. Uh, and then simply the left of J2 hash, and we take everything the length of J2 hash minus 5, that gets us the name because the year is always the last 4 plus the space. And then the right of J2 hash. This is a ridiculous way to go. I'm just putting it out there for completeness because you never know if 10 years from now, someone will come along and do a reaction video on this dual number 195 and say, well, I wonder why they didn't include let. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun. Excel time. Stand by. It's a dual Excel time. Mama.